Hello, this is Kyle Davidson, and uh, today I'm going to give a little overview on how to uh, use HFSS to design a microstrip antenna. Uh, and the antenna we're going to do today is a rectangular patch. It's uh, a 31 on a 31 mil Rogers 4350 board, and it's designed for operation in a, a radar system at, in the X band, uh, specifically at 10 gigahertz. Now I've already gone through, um, previously designed the actual antenna and calculated its dimensions. Uh, and if you'd like to go know more about that process, uh, I highly recommend checking out Blenis's book, Antenna Theory, Analysis, and Design. Um, however, we're, what we're going to do today is, is simply take um, the work we've already done to design our antenna dimensions and implement that model and simulate it inside HFSS. So in front of me, as you can see, I've got the HFSS um, system running, and this is eventually what we want. Uh, we want this rectangular patch um, that um, you can see right in front of you um, on a, its substrate. And eventually, um, this was designed and, and built into a 64 element array. Um, but we're just gonna start with the patch today. So we'll load up a, a blank screen, you can see right in front of us. And like always, we're going to start off by placing, a, um, actually, sorry, before we get to the box, um, we're going to set up our solution type in HFSS. So we'll the menu, solution type, and we're going to put the feed right in the substrate on the microstrip line. Um, so we're going to choose terminal. Uh, modal would be if we were going to put it sort of at the edge of the substrate or in a coaxial cable. Um, but terminal is going to be a little easier for the, the design we're going to implement today um, as we're going to build a corporate feed network around this patch. So we've chosen our uh, driven terminal here, which you can see over on the left uh, on this design named patch tutorial. It's a change from driven modal to driven terminal. And now we're going to go up here in the right and uh, pick the draw box icon. Just click around the screen and we've got a box. So that box um, now appears over here in the, the list of solids in our, our project. Um, and we're gonna change its properties just by double clicking on box one. And we're gonna change its name to substrate. That's right there. Uh, then we need to change its material. Um, I already have Rogers 4350 listed down there, but you probably don't. So you'll just click on edit, type an R, and that'll take us to the R portion of the list. And you can see down here, uh, Rogers 4350 is one of the choices. So we'll click on it and press OK. Uh, last thing we're gonna do down here is uh, pick out the color and I'm choosing a, a light gray and I'm gonna make the substrate 80% transparent. Uh, so we can see through pretty well. And you can visualize that now. So there's our, our substrate. Of course, it's actually for uh, essentially some random dimensions at this point. So we need to go in Click on, double click on the create box icon here, and we get the uh, the properties of that create, create box operation appearing. And throughout this uh, video, we're gonna be using uh, not numeric, well, we're gonna be using numeric dimensions, but we're gonna define everything in terms of variables. And we're doing that for a very important reason. Uh, we wanna frame everything in HFSS in terms of variables, so it, it's easy to modify a design and for those changes to propagate instead of having to go back and, and redo all our our numbers. And on top of that, if we want to use the optometri optometrics functions down the way, even if it's just a, a simple parameter sweep to adjust, for example, um, if our, our patch is resonating at the wrong frequency and we want to tune the length a little, um, we can ha do that automatically if uh, we have defined uh, the length of that patch as a variable uh, and can sweep it through a number of numbers. So we'll start here by labeling our position where it's going to start drawing from. And we're going to call that substrate minus substrate divided by two, minus substrate divided by two, and we'll, we'll start at zero. So there's our X and Y dimensions, and we'll just print it in there. And now it's asking for what dimensions we want the substrate to be. And in this case, case we're gonna choose a, a 40 millimeter uh, square rectangle. So now it's uh, gonna be 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters. We'll just change our, our X and Y dimensions to reflect the substrate. And now we're going to change our height to be uh, minus h, uh, which will be 31 mils. And uh, the reason I've gone with minus is so that all the uh, the planar circuits are going to be at a height of zero in the, on the z-axis, and our ground plane will be down at minus h. So our substrate, as you can see, has gotten much larger, and I'm just going to hit control D on the keyboard to, to zoom out and have everything on the screen, as you can see right there. Now, um, 
we have our substrate in place. Uh, the next step, because this is going to be a, a microstrip structure, is actually to put our ground plane in place. And there's a the simplest way to do that is simply uh, click on this uh, draw rectangle symbol up here. We're going to drop it down at the, the two corners on the vertices. And if we give it a second, yes, we have our rectangle appearing. Um, but we're going to change a few of its properties. The first one we're going to do is we're going to change its name to be ground plane. And then next we're going to change um, the color to be sort of the start green down here. And we're going to make it about 60% transparent. And there's our ground plane. Uh, I am going to change it so it, it's uh, stated in terms of variables and it's going to be uh, the same dimensions um, as the uh, substrate that's underneath. So I'm going to make its height its position is going to be down at minus h and then we shouldn't see any change uh, so it is in the same dimensions. but. Now if we wanted to go back and modify any of these dimensions, for example, it, it could be as simple as changing the, the size of our substrate to be like 45 millimeters. We simply went over here, we, we clicked on the design we're interested in, and then we'll see the list of variables. And I, there I modified it from 40 to 45 millimeters, and I'll modify it back. And you can see the change happen instantaneously. So it certainly makes our life easier. And now we'll just save the, the file. All right, um, we have the basics of our, our system in place now. What we need is to build the planar circuit that's going to go on top. And uh, we'll do that by picking another rectangle to draw. And we'll draw it somewhere in the middle. And there we have our rectangle. And we're going to go through the same process. We're going to name it patch. It'll be our patch antenna. We're going to change it to an orange color. Um, we're going to make it uh, transparency of zero, so it's completely opaque. And there we have uh, our patch in the middle. Unfortunately, again, it is nowhere near the right sizes, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna change that now. Um, and the dimensions we're gonna choose are simply gonna be um, a length of 7.5 millimeters and uh, a width of 10 millimeters. And these have already been optimized in a previous simulation. They weren't quite exactly what uh, the equation spit out, but that's never the case. So. We'll go with minus LP, that's the length of my patch, divided by 2. So it'll be just to the uh, back and left. P divided by 2 and 0. Um, our reference will be just to the back and left of our uh, center of origin right there. Click, click enter. It'll ask for the dimensions. Ask for the length first, 7.5 millimeters. Our width, 10 millimeters. And there we go. Our X will simply be LP, the length of the patch, and our Y size WP, the width of the patch. And there we have it. There's our, our patch antenna. Now, as you noticed earlier, it's uh, an inset feed, and uh, the feed is, like normal, about 30% of the way in from one of these patches, and it's fed with a 50 ohm transmission line. And that's our next step. Um, we're going to do this essentially in uh, um, sort of two stages. The first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll cut out the gap here. Uh, that is created um, into the patch, and then we're going to create a 50 ohm transmission line um, that's going to go coming out of that. So we'll go back to our design that we're, we're building right now. Uh, we're going to drop down a, another rectangle, and we'll call this guy Gap, and we'll click OK. So now we have to go uh, into the create rectangle properties of the Gap. And we're going to change this um, here, and it's going to be uh, essentially referenced from the edge of the patch uh, that we've drawn, um, and then we're going to go inwards and, the, and to the right. So uh, our x dimension is going to be LP divided by 2 minus x0, where x0 is the x dimension of our patch, minus y0 divided by 2, where that's the uh, y dimension of our patch. And we're going to put this at the uh, zero on the x-axis. And uh, y not, sir, x not is going to be uh, 2.6 millimeters, and y not is going to be 2.8 millimeters. And I did something wrong there, didn't I? Ah, I forgot to enter the actual dimensions. So uh, x not, will, x size will be there, y size will be that. 
hooked in, and there you can see the, uh, the gap for our patch. Uh, and from here, it, it's actually um, pretty simple what to do next. Uh, we have our two th things uh, that we want to subtract from each, from each other. We're going to click on the patch first. I'm going to hold down Control, click on the gap, and then I move up here um, to go to the Subtract button. And, and you can also follow, find this under the Modeler menu under Boolean Subtract. Um, over on the left, once we do that, over on the, the left we get uh, a list of blank parts, and those are the parts we're subtracting stuff from. Over on the right we um, have the tool parts, um, the stuff we're subtracting, and you can see that with the minus sign in the middle. Uh, and I can actually, if I can click on these, I can move them back and forth as required, um, which you may have to do if you're dealing with uh, multiple pieces. Uh, and if I click down here in the lower left um, to clone objects before operation, that would simply make sure anything that was subtracted there was a copy of placed on the board so uh, uh, we don't lose it in the process. Clicked OK and there is our, our gap in our patch. So I'm just holding down the Alt key to spin it around and show you what's going on. Um, but we have our patch, it's got its gap in it. Um, the last thing we need to make this a circuit is we actually need to put in that 50 ohm transmission line which is going to feed it. So that's what I've done here. Add another rectangle and we're going to call this um, feed line. And we'll change its color to match that, that of the patch. Okay. Now again we'll go in and uh, we'll modify the uh, actual dimensions of it. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, we'll put it sort of position to start from right here um, at where the, the edge of the patch is at the inset and then we're going to draw the patch, out, uh, sorry the, the feed line out from there. So that's going to be at LP divided by 2 minus X naught, comma, minus W50 divided by 2, comma, comma 0. And uh, W50 divided by 2 is the uh, width of a 50 ohm transmission line on our uh, Rogers 4350 31 mil board. And it's asking for it, and that is 1.76 millimeters. So the X size here is simply going to be uh, W. LP divided by 2. Plus X naught. Oh, sorry, my mistake. It'll be uh, X naught plus L1. There we go. And L1 is simply going to be the, the, the length of the patch we're interested in. Uh, sorry, the feed line to our patch. In this case, I'm simply going to make it equal to, to 2 millimeters. Uh, and our Y size will be W50, which is the width of our 50 ohm impedance line. And there we go. There is our, our feed line to our patch. Um, and you can see it appearing right there. So we're good. We have our, our feed line, our patch, our ground plane, our substrate. And the last thing we're going to do is take that patch, um, left click on it. We're going to hold down control, left click on the feed line. Uh, and click the Unite button up here, uh, and that'll combine those two uh, in the Unite operation, and we have one single piece of, well, HFS doesn't actually know what this is right now. Um, since we haven't told it other than anything other than it's a, a flat surface of uh, zero height. So that's actually going to be the, the next little step in this. Um, we're going to go through, uh, we have our, our circuit built, um, but we need to add a few more things. We need to define the, the surfaces. Um, we need to define the, um, the air box in which it's going to radiate into. And we need to provide a source. And the first thing we're going to do is actually provide it that source. So we'll uh, do that by drawing a rectangle. What we want to get is what you see here on uh, the, the finished design. It's this rectangular box of the height of the substrate and the width of the transmission line. Uh, going from the top of the substrate to the bottom, essentially connecting the ground plane and the, the microstrip transmission line. So, to do that, I've got my little rectangular box. We're going to call this source. We're going to change its color to bright green. And it, we're going to keep it completely opaque. So, now we'll go in and, and change its dimensions. And the first thing we need to do here is actually uh, change the axes to X. And that's going to change its, its orientation, which you can see right now, it was in the XY plane before, and now it's in the uh, YZ plane. 
uh, and you can see it vertically oriented, which is how we want it if it's going to go from the top of the substrate to the bottom. So we've got that sorted out, uh, and now we simply need to go to uh, the edge of the pat, uh, the edge of the feed line to the patch. So it'll be LP divided by two plus L1 comma minus W50 divided by two, and it's at a height of zero. And if we click there, okay, we can see it showing up at the right location, and you can see it's um, its position starting from is right there at the corner. So now we just need to give it an uh, a Y and a Z size. And the Y size is simply going to be W50, the width of the transmission line, and the Z size will be minus H, the height of the substrate. So there we go. We have our source. Now there's another way to do this, uh, which I'm going to show you right now. And uh, we'll start by deleting that source. Um, and that involves just starting by clicking the E button, and that'll let us select the edges of our various surfaces. Uh, and you can see I've highlighted one right there patch edge 82, uh, which is fine, um, but we want to do something with that now. What we're going to do is we're essentially going to extrude it, uh, draw it along a vector um, after detaching it from that surface. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to, to modeler edge and we're going to create an object from edge. We click on that and now we have a new line over here. You can delete patch object from edge one uh, and uh, you can see it well, it is right there. Um, it's a single line, so it's hard to, to visualize. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go draw, and we're going to go sweep along a vector. And uh, it's asking me to enter some dimensions right now, but we're going to use uh, variables again. Uh, and I just sort of clicked anywhere on that and asked for the draft angle, draft type round. We're just going to click zero degrees and OK. And what's done is stretched out that edge in the direction of the vector for the, the length we've given it. Um, wasn't where we wanted it. We actually want it to be straight down. So we want it to be 0 and 0 in the x and y axis and the height of the substrate in the z axis. And we'll just change its color and its name. And there we've got bright green, keep it opaque. And you can see same surface. All right. Now, uh, the last object we need to create is uh, the air box over top. And we're going to start by just clicking on our substrate. I'm going to press Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it. And there we have a, a copy of it, substrate one. Uh, and we'll change its name to be air. We're going to change its material to be vacuum. And we're going to change it. And it's display wireframe. Uh, you can see it right there. Um, we'll check that. So it's just going to be the wireframe edges of the box that show up. Make it black and we'll make the uh, wireframe completely opaque. Um, and you can't see it now, but it'll appear in a second. Uh, now we'll go into the create box dimensions uh, and it's starting uh, the same size as our substrate. It's going to be positioned initially right at zero on the Z axis. And we're just going to draw it up by at least a quarter wave. Uh, and in this case, uh, we'll make it 15 millimeters in height. Click OK. We'll zoom out. And you can see, um, if I click on the airbox, we have an airbox uh, directly above the surface highlighted right now. And it's just a wireframe. So now we have basically everything set up inside our, our model. But the, the last thing we need to do is take these surfaces that are currently listed as unassigned and make them something. Uh, we need to provide boundary conditions for them for HHS to actually do the simulation. So I'll click on ground plane first, right click, and I'll assign a boundary. And in this case, we're going to make it a perfect E, a perfect conductor. And we're going to call it ground. Uh, at this point, it's an option. We're not going to do it, but you can check the box for infinite ground plane. Um, it is an option. It does simplify the calculations, but it's not going to take into account fringing effects. Uh, not that it really will right now with the air box uh, going right to the edges. And we'll do the same thing with the patch. We'll assign it a uh, perfect D boundary, give it a name, patch, and click OK. And then over here in our, our model, our design, we've got two boundaries now. Ground plane, you can see highlighted, and perfect E patch, which you can see right there. So that's good. Now we've got one final surface which hasn't been assigned, and it's this source. And that's going to be the excitation for our simulation. So we, we left click on it, 
we, we right click and instead of assigning a boundary, we're going to assign a lumped port. And in this case, we're going to call it P1. Um, and we're going to use um, the ground plane as a reference. So now, if I were to go over here, uh, you can see we have an, an excitation, P1. Um, and it, it's listed the terminal there. And I'm just going to change the terminal name to 1 because uh, when it goes to find the reflection coefficient, um, it'll list that um, and patch underscore terminal one or whatever it was is a, a little confusing, especially since we only have one port in this design. Now, the final boundary we, we need to do um, is the actual radiation box that's uh, going to go around the edges of this. So I'm going to press F, um, and that's going to change what I'm selecting to be in the face of an object. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Select, and you can see faces is highlighted here. These are my different options to select. And then down to by name. Uh, and this lets me pick an object by name. And, uh, and we're selecting the faces so we can select the faces we want to select as radiation boundaries. And we want to find the one that we don't want, which is the, the bottom surface on the substrate. We want to pick them all but that. Um, so I'll stop here with face 121, hold down the control button, pick our, our five surfaces, click OK. And then I'm going to HFS, HFSS uh, boundaries assign, and uh, we're going to make this our radiation boundary. We'll just call it radiation, and it's going to use this boundary um, to solve for uh, the far field things we're interested in, uh, the gain, um, or anything to do with radiation pattern. Okay, so now we have a complete model. It is ready for us to tell it how to to model this, how to simulate this model now, uh, but. All the, the context for it to work are in place. Um, so what we need to do now is go into Analysis, right-click, Add Solution Setup. And, and this is the basis of how everything's going to work from here. Um, and we start with the most important thing, our solution frequency. And we're solving for 10 gigahertz. So we'll put in 10 gigahertz. Uh, we'll change the maximum number of passes to actually at least 10. Uh, I found it, it tends not to converge very well if you just go with the, the basic six. Uh, and if you ever get an, uh, a warning, um, not necessarily an error, but a warning that says it failed to converge, usually the solution here is to increase um, the maximum number of passes, and it'll eventually get down to a, a conversion solution, assuming there is one. So we'll click OK. And I have gone up here and, and clicked on this little icon now to validate it, make sure there is actually a, a, um, everything is ready. It's, it's done a check of all the problems. It could possibly experience before you go and run the simulation because it may be a, a rather lengthy one, although this didn't take too long to simulate since it's a small patch. Um, and it's ready to go. Uh, but we want to do a couple more things. Um, we want to go into setup, uh, our, our solution we've created, and right click, and we're going to add a frequency sweep. And the frequency sweep we're interested in is going to be a, um, a, a linear step, and we're going to go over the entire X band from 8 to 12 gigahertz in 100 megahertz steps right here. And I'll display this. These are all the solutions we're going to find. Um, and you can see there's 41 points it's going to solve for, which isn't excessive, but uh, it is a, a relatively large number depending on how lengthy or a time this is going to take. And lastly, we have kind of three options right here. Um, interpolating, fast, or discrete. Um, I'm going to go with discrete because it, it brings up something I should show you here as far as your options. Um, It'll ask you whether or not at this point if you want to save all the fields. Uh, that is not necessarily something you want to do. It depends what you're looking at. Uh, but this is an antenna we're looking at, and we probably want to view the radiation patterns as it changes with frequencies, especially if it was a, a wideband or ultra-wideband antenna. So we'll click OK. And it's still valid. The last thing we'll do is uh, we're going to go down and we're going to insert um, a far field setup, an infinite sphere. And uh, this is the information that's going to gather and uh, calculate anything to do with radiation pattern 4. Uh, so you can see it's done in, in spherical coordinates. We have phi and theta. And you're simply choosing the directions you want to have it solve for the, uh, the far field information. Um, and we're going uh, through uh, for phi 0 to 360 in 10 degree steps. And in theta 0 through uh, 180 in 10 degree steps. And that's going to give us the full um, three dimensional view of our uh, results. Okay, 
Now, um, the next step would be to click this Analyze All button up here. And at that point, it, HFS is simply going to run through the results and uh, do your simulation. Um, but we're going to skip over that because uh, I don't think anyone really wants to watch a couple minutes, five minutes of us uh, uh, waiting on the progress bar. And instead, um, we're actually going to go over to the, the finished results. And, and this is the same antenna um, simulated. Um, earlier, the exact same dimension, same model, um, but we have some results. And the S11 is what we're interested in, the reflection coefficient. And you can see down there it's at uh, minus 18 dB at 10 gigahertz, and uh, it took a little tuning to get it there, um, but it's working relatively well. And uh, more interestingly, we can see the radiation pattern. And you can see this is the realized gain um, operating at uh, 10 gigahertz, and we're getting about 6.4 decibels of gain. Uh, which seems a little high at its peak, uh, but this is assuming um, there is a number of ideal factors in there, including the, uh, the um, infinitely thin and perfectly conducting ground plane and the actual patch itself. Uh, but you can see we've got a, a nice amorphous blob, typical, typical of a patch antenna, um, and then very little radiation, um, but a couple little lobes um, at the back. So there's a, a nice little patch simulation. And this was actually done uh, for all reasons of uh, I was interested in testing our new milling machine uh, in the lab a, a couple years ago and uh, built a little 64 element array to, to see how it would do uh, with something that required essentially a lot of consistency um, um, at a higher frequency, uh, 10 gigahertz, uh, uh, for what, to push sort of the capabilities of what it was uh, able to do at the time. Um, and you can see we've got an 8x8 array here. Uh, and there is one thing I wanted to, to point out, um, but we'll get to that in a second, how it's fed. Um, 60, so we've got 64 elements, the, the exact same inset feed, and then you can see that the branching network of um, um, 50 ohm lines to 200 ohm lines on a corporate feed with a, a 70 ohm uh, quarter wave transformer, and then back to the 50 ohms and so on and so forth until we uh, hit all 64 elements. But it's being fed in the middle with a, a coaxial feed um, right here. And uh, we'll turn that around. And the reason I mention this is because you can see uh, we've got the, the dielectric, the metal core, and then the metal outer sheath uh, of a pretty standard coaxial feed. But it's being modeled with a, a, a driven modal simulation, and that's a, a wave port instead of a, a terminal. Uh, and the actual results turned out uh, quite well. Uh, this thing was optimized at uh, 10 gigahertz, um, and uh, I think the actual measurements, it was a couple of years ago, worked out to be like 9.94 gigahertz. Um, so we ended up with uh, maybe half a percent of error uh, between the, on the first go between the, the manufacturing and the simulation, which is quite good. And uh, this is an actual photo that I, I took earlier today of the uh, actual patch array. A little bit corroded, though, uh, in between the, the two years uh, between uh, manufacturing and, and me leaving it on the shelf and finally taking the photo. So, uh, there's our, our results um, for a rectangular patch antenna. I hope you found this helpful, and if you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to leave them on the, the website.